continue our conversation with entrepreneur restaurateur Russell. You were telling us a little bit about uh, your many locations and now the next generation in your family. Tell us a little bit about uh, your family, how many children, and what are they doing these days? Well, I have two children, uh, Steve and Derek. And Steve um, graduated recently from Wharton uh, with his MBA and joined our team to help some interloop development that we're doing. Yes. And then uh, Derek is opera, uh, working at one of the restaurants, uh, Burger Libre, uh, since it's a new store where. Yeah. We're really taking care of it closely. So tell me a little bit about growing up. Were you always uh, in, mind, in your mind thinking that you wanted to run a restaurant, become an entrepreneur? You come from a family of entrepreneurs and restaurateurs. What was your thought process getting to where you are today? Well, I was very fortunate to grow up in the, uh, the presence of a visionary, my dad, who started El Toro in 1960. And seeing the things that he did, uh, he was really bef uh, ahead of his time. Uh, he had traveled to Mexico in the 70s to buy an avocado farm, and they didn't allow avocados to be imported from Mexico to the United States back then, but they, they are now, of course. And uh, so I'm almost buying a jalapeno plant, and he, had a, he developed a central kitchen where he did some of his processing. And uh, so I, I, I learned a lot just by watching the things that he was doing back in the 70s. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and then I got my opportunity in, in the 90s to open up my first restaurant, and, uh, but I'm very grateful for, to, to my dad. Yes. So let's talk about, uh, you know, as you were growing up and, and working, what was your first, you know, your first paycheck? What did you do to earn your first paycheck? Uh, believe it or not, making tamales. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, what every kind? Pork uh, or chicken? Pork, pork, uh, pork, of course pork. Uh, but yeah, back when I was just a young, uh, probably 12 or 13 years old, uh -huh. I would uh, go to the commissary. They would make tamales every week. Uh -huh. And I would be there and uh, taking them off the conveyor and, uh -huh. and just wrapping them. So were you a better salesperson or a tamale maker? What would you uh, say? You're probably a better, well, you know, a, a little of each, but a uh, better salesperson than anything. Yeah. I think if I believe in something, I can sell it. Yeah. And growing up, let's talk about high school. What were your high school days like? And were you thinking about going off on your own someday? I, I suffered from ADD from day one. Yes. Uh, I was a dreamer. As a matter of fact, uh, when I was in second grade, the report card, the teacher wrote on it, Russell always seems to be lost in space. And uh, I just always dreamed, I guess. Yeah. And, and that's why, uh, fortunately, I think that's why where we're at today, because I do, I do enjoy dreaming about the possibilities. Yeah, and for, for your children, growing up in your family now and seeing your success, you know, what do you hope your legacy will be for your children? Uh, if, that's an easy one. I want them to see the power of giving, uh, of, of taking care of your fellow man. We do a lot of things, our core value, reinvesting our, our team members and local community is the cornerstone of our success. We do that to degrees that I don't think uh, other companies do, and, and there's a reason. Uh, at the end of the day, we'll leave the earth with what we came, in, came into it with, and I just love seeing the impact our business can have on the community today. So we do a lot of that. So speaking of which, you, you started your first restaurant. How long was it before you embarked on the second one, and did you think that ultimately you'd have so many locations? Uh, my, my, my approach has always been one location at a time, make sure that one, wh whichever location we open up is up and running correctly and yes. profitably. But uh, yeah, we uh, always knew that the life I wanted to live was not going to be able to be done with one unit or two units or three units. So, but it's just kind of created its own momentum because of the success that each location has had to where, you know, you, we, we have to grow. I mean, we almost have to grow. How have you been able to retain those employees and help them grow as part of your success? Well, they see that, um, that we back our, our words with action. And, and they're just not uh, words on a wall, printed on a wall. We really do help our, our, our team members to, uh, and, and to incredible levels. One, for example, is we've done, some, we've done probably 14 complete dental makeovers, which uh, is very life-changing, as you can imagine. And, and it's beautiful to see a person come out of the shell that was that you never saw before. Mm -hmm. And so we really enjoy doing things like that. Uh, we recently purchased a, a Autobach X3 prosthetic leg for a to-go person in our Texas City location. And that was, it was very, very expensive, just let me just say that. But we, uh, it was something that most people wouldn't even think a business would do for someone, but we did it. And those are the things that gives us the most joy. It's, it's conscious sure. capitalism at the, at the highest level. Well, and speaking of which, we have a lot of people who watch our program who are aspiring entrepreneurs. Yes. Uh, what advice would you have for them as they perhaps are launching or perhaps are already in a business and, as you know, just struggling to make that payroll? You know, uh, when, when I opened Gringo's in 93, there wasn't Google, so I didn't have access 
like they do at their fingertips to really research anything. But I would find the, the, the best example of what they want to become and go study that person, go study that company. And, uh, you know, back in the 80s um, and into the 90s, I've always admired the Pappas Restaurant Organization. Yes. And I always told myself, if I want to be anything like them, I have one or two choices. Go work for them or hire someone that worked for them. Okay. And in 96, my general manager was a former general manager of Papacitos. And again, it's, it's about tapping into that mindset that, that can take you where you want to go. And it's very important to pay attention to that. Well, that's very good advice, and we really thank you, and again, we're so very proud of you and all that you've been able to do, and certainly you've changed the landscape for restaurants and thank you, sir. all of the many families and people that you've hired that today are, are doing well because of your work and that of your employees and well, workforce. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, and on behalf of the Houston Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, we want to thank you for joining us here on Houston Legends. Keep watching us on Cube 57. I'm Dr. Laura Murillo. Thank you.